the most popular meeting of the year. We appreciate everyone coming. At this time, we will call the meeting to order, and I am going to turn it over to Mr. Cobb for an introduction, presentation, and then, Mr. Cobb, you're going to turn it over to staff and then back to us? Yes, sir. That's, that's the plan. Best plan? That, that is the plan. Yes, sir. All right. Mr. Cobb, meeting is yours. All right. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, tonight, the City Council has requested to establish the tentative 2014-15 uh, millage rates and to schedule the first public hearing for the proposed FY1415 budget for the purposes of public notification under the Florida Truth and Millage statutes. Uh, tonight I'm going to basically walk you through uh, the highlights and then I'm going to turn it over to Ms. Hayes and she's going to take you through the details much like we've done uh, earlier. Uh, Mr. Cobb, I do apologize. Yes, I sir. did forget for the record all members of council are present. Uh, thank you. As with anything, budgets are not, they're pretty complex. They're not simple things. And so one of the things that we tried to do this year is we tried to break it down into a uh, simple term. That was, that was one of the things that um, me not being necessarily a numbers person, it always helped me to figure out how, how we were getting there. And so good news of it that I can relate to council is that uh, your proposed budget uh, is balanced at the current millage rate of 4.8626. That's the good news. Uh, the not so good news is, is that we have some other needs that need to be addressed. And so tonight, if you'll notice in your resolution, we're not recommending that you set the tentative millage rate at 4.8626. We're asking that you set the, milli the tentative millage rate at uh, 5.2980. And we believe that that's going to get us on the right track to addressing the operational needs of the city. And what I wanted to do tonight, just to give you just a quick overview of some of the things that we've, we've been looking at as far as the operational needs. We wanted to make sure that we, we maintained our FY1314 uh, level of service. We also needed to make sure that we funded the items that we added to the budget at mid-year last year. We funded them for a full year. We also had some increases in fixed costs and benefits that we needed to address. And these are costs, the benefit costs are costs to the city. By policy, we have to maintain a 15% reserve. So we made sure that we did that. We also have the opening of Center Lake Park and you know, Oviedo on the park. And so we wanted to account for that. We're anticipating that we're going to have five months of operation during FY 14-15. So we had to make sure that that was also accounted for in the budget. Uh, by our agreements, we also have a 1.5% increase for police and fire. We also have a uh, market adjustment pay plan for the police bargaining units. Some other items and needs that we wanted to also address in the budget was that a 1.5% increase for the general employees. As we talked in June, one of the things that we talked about was starting to rebuild our organization. Since 2007, we've been decreasing the organization. I, I likened it in June to tearing it down. Now it's time to start the rebuilding. We have approximately 15, we have, we have 15 employees that are currently 30 hour a week employees. We want to increase those employees to 40 hours a week as the starting of the rebuilding of the organization. And we were able to accomplish that. Uh, we also have, this year we started a committee of employees known as IMPACT. And the impact study group is what it was set out to do was to determine a way for us to reward the employees and to start the process of developing a merit system for the employees. One of the things, the first things that came out of it was, was that we needed to do a salary study. And we needed to take a look at not only just our salary ranges, but we needed to also look at our job descriptions and we needed to do different audits of the different positions. So we've got funding. We've, one of the things that we needed to do was to do the funding for the study. And we also had money for a set aside to begin the implementation of that study. As you know, the hospital is going to be the Central Florida Regional Hospital receive a certificate of need. So we wanted to make sure that we were in a position to assist them uh, with the development of their hospital. We also have some other economic development needs that are over and above what we were funding at 13, 14 levels. And we also have some increased costs with our magistrate. Now, the good news of it all is that with the 4.8626, we were able to do nearly all of these things. Um, we were able to do everything that's in red. 
including the 1.5% with the general employees, but we were only able to reclassify 10 of the 15 employees. And you'll start to notice that my focus this year was on the employees. I wanted to make sure that we started that rebuilding process of the organization. So when you look at some of the priorities that we've recommended, it's more or less based primarily we took care of the employees first and then we started to fill in the rest. So at 4.8626, we can do everything in red. However, there were some other things that I saw that I wanted to recommend to you for consideration as far as in setting your tentative millage rate. And one of the things I want to explain, and this is more for everybody because I know city council knows this, but the tentative millage rate is a rate that you can establish that you say this is the maximum that we're willing to charge. And then as you go through the budget hearing process, you can reduce that rate, but you can't go above it. So what we're asking tonight, or what we're recommending tonight, is that the city council establish a tentative millage rate of 5.289, which is higher than the, the current millage rate of 4.8626. This gives them the opportunity to discuss these operational needs and to then make a final decision on them in the public hearings in September. So the other items of the 5.298 is making sure we get those 15 employees reclassified in 40 hours. Also making sure that uh, we're, at, we're in a good position to assist the hospital, to maintain our economic development program, to offset the increases of our magistrate, and to take care of the impact, fee, the impact study, as well as the set-aside funds. You know, there's about $65,000 for the study itself, and there's a little over $100,000 set aside to begin the implementation to hit the critical needs. Uh, also, for Council's consideration, we have some other items that are unfunded within the budget. And these are individual items that are provided in your attachment one within, within your, your agenda memorandum. And what we tried to do is basically in that attachment one is to give you the storyboard that, we just, that I just walked you through. But if you'll, we wanted to bring these for your consideration. I couldn't say that these were a higher priority than these. However, they are things that I think you should take a look at and, and consider. So tonight, Council, uh, the resolution is written to set a tentative millage rate at 5.298. We've tried to uh, bring forward our reasoning for it. Uh, what I would like to do now is turn it over to Mrs. Hayes. She has some things that she wants to walk you through. But if you brought your, if you brought your budget book with you tonight, there's something I want to call to your attention, and that's the very first page of the book. Uh, one of the new things that we did this year was that we started building our budget team. And Ms. Hayes and Ms. Bigelow, uh, if you remember last year, our budget team was Ms. Hayes, Ms. Bigelow, Lucy Cole, and uh, Kelly Jones. Well, this year we expanded the team, and we brought in new team members. Uh, we brought in Paul Belden from the Recreation Department. We also brought in Tracy Rodriguez from uh, Public Works. And I wanted to let you put a face to a name because they put in countless hours uh, in developing this budget and making sure that it was a balanced budget and making sure that it made rational recommendations. So I wanted to recognize them because of did outstanding job. Uh, it was pretty much they come and ask me, what do you think we, how do you think we should go on this? I'd give an answer and then they would go away. And they would just, they would start doing the number crunching. And so I wanted to tell you, also tonight, uh, Ms. Jones is over there. She has a spreadsheet that she's going to pull up on the screens. Uh, some good advice by the mayor. Uh, we had a discussion and the mayor told me, he said, give me, give me the millage equivalents. And so what we can do tonight is Ms. Jones has got it set up. She's got a spreadsheet set up for you that if there's an item that you want to not do or if there is an item that you want to do or if you want to replace, she can tell you, show you in real time the uh, impact on, on the millage. So she'll be able to do that for you. I hope I'm sitting here saying this. <laughs> Kelly's not nodding her head no, so I think we're in pretty good shape. So... Uh, and council, if you do decide not to um, not to set the tentative millage at the 5.298, then I would recommend that in your motion be specific as to what the millage rate that you wish to establish, and then we can that way we'll then have the have the resolution prepared to reflect what your motion states. Uh, with that, I'll uh, I'll turn it over to Ms. Hayes. Mr. Cobb, just one second. Yes, sir. Um, the requested millage rate of 5.298 
includes the general obligation bond for Oviedo on the park. Yes, sir. Would you like me to review the, how that's broken down? Well, I think it would just be best so everybody has an sure. understanding because that we cannot change. That we cannot change. Uh, yes, sir. You are correct, Mayor. How we came to the 5.298, the current millage rate is 4.8626. The recommended extra millage to get us to, it gets us to around 5.0434 is 0 0.1808, so that's the recommended additional millage. And then the general obligation millage is 0 0.02546, which you take those three numbers, you add them together, and that's how we came up with the total tentative recommended millage of 5.298. Thank you. Any right questions on. from counsel for Mr. Cobb? Say that one more time, though. What three numbers? Okay, you take the current millage rate, 4.8626, the recommended additional millage of 0 0.1808. And you take the geo bond millage, the geo bond millage, 0 0.2546. And then that gives you a total recommended millage of 5.2980. It's all outlined in your memorandum, but the mayor's right. It's good to get it out on the record so that you have it. All right, and just before we turn it over, does anybody else have any questions for Mr. Cobb at this Not time? Right no, we're good. Ms. Hayes? Good evening. I would just like to state um, again, even though the city manager has already um, addressed the budget team that we put together this year that I appreciate their work and um, just kind of point each one of them one more time and introduce them Kelly Jones from the finance division um, Paul Bilden from Parks and Rec Lucy Cole from the water services water utilities division and Tracy Rodriguez from the fleet support which is part of public works and then up in the balcony is Gail Bigelow who is our communications person <laughs> as well as budgeting and she's not down here tonight she's up there making sure everything is uh, published and uh, shows up correctly on the website it's so up like a jack in the box, so. <laughs> and I'd also like to thank all of our directors who brought in um, their budgets to the meetings um, with information and details and uh, supported us and helped us in preparing this information for you and Ms. Hayes, if I could, uh, Mayor and Council, we are going to be adding to the team next year. My understanding is that there's at least three other departments that will be joining the team. So the good part about it, all of this is, is that they now understand the budget process. They can go back and be a bigger asset in their departments during the year, not just during the budget process, but outside the budget process. And so now mm -hmm. they become a resource to the other folks in their departments. So we hope to one day we're going to have everybody. Uh, represented on the committee. What are the three other departments? Police, fire, Police and department, fire department, and development services. Yes. Great. Wonderful. Um, as per the um, memo that was attached or sent out for the budget, I'd like to go through the attachments and just briefly talk about them and answer any questions you might have. Um, the first attachment was a general fund funded and unfunded in which we basically have placed up on the board up here where we show that we um, have funded um, new positions for Oviedo on the Park, some fixed costs, debt, the um, police um, adjustment plan for um, equity adjustment, the citywide salary increases, Oviedo on the Park um, from an operating perspective, and uh, 15 uh, part-time, which as we discussed, is really the 10 part-time. We actually show you that in the area in, in, in the center of the page of the attachment that talks about priority level and requested funding. Um, we give you more information um, talking about um, the impact review, the Oviedo Hospital, and the economic development, as well as some additional information on the fixed costs to kind of give you the outline that provides you the current proposed millage, which is the 4.8626, and the voted debt, which is the 2.2546, um, and the requested items, taking in consideration those fixed costs of 0 0.1808 for a total 5.2980. And the only thing I do ask is as part of the um, adoption this evening that we specifically state the millage rate for the city separately from the geo bond millage rate and then the total millage rate and that the resolution um, is stated as such so the three different to or three different numbers mentioned during that process so the regular city millage rate the geo and the total millage rate 
Um, and, and I'd be glad to answer any questions you have. I think we tried to break this down to give you a total um, picture of what was requested. Through the bottom of the page, you have unfunded, which is about $775,000 worth of items, or 0.3789 millage rate. And there are things in there like training. Um, there's some parks and rec um, uh, banking fees adjustments. There for credit, uh, the parks and rec accreditation. There's some seasonal employees that was adjusted. Um, there's um, some software items, some equipment items, um, message boards, um, fuel costs. We have adjusted some items, some of the departments for fuel costs based on this year's actuals. There's the ICMA, ICMA citizen survey that was removed, the branding, succession planning was removed, consultants for LCD rewrite. Some of that information was uh, reduced about by 60,000 total. Um, there's some printing also reduced. Sidewalk repairs were reduced by 10. We still re, uh, still remain 40,000 in the budget. Um, the public works director had submitted for 50 this year, but we did reduce that back to last year's service levels. Uh, we removed a temporary uh, police um, lobby personnel person. Um, that person was established when the um, communication center um, became outsourced, then we um, needed to put someone out there in the front to assist them. So that position is not funded this year at this time. Website redesign of about 75,000, um, that has not been included. Some various cloud services was reduced. The assistant city manager position has been placed on hold and it has not been funded. And the open position that we have called from time to time, the PIO position is not funded. All the positions have, uh, that have been in the budgets in the previous years, like the assistant city manager and the public information officers, those are FTEs. They're equivalent to one FTE or one full-time equivalent position. Those positions or those FTEs have remained in the budget. It's just they're unfunded positions. Um, and then the planner was funded for a half a year um, and a record specialist for the police department, which is a new request, was um, originally submitted for an entire year, and we were not able to fund those. So those are a list of the items that we were not able to fund. Just in general, if you had any specific questions, we can definitely pull up uh, particular items and look to see. If you don't object, I'll go on to the next attachment. Any questions on attachment one? Okay. Um, we just gave you some uh, general information on millage rate fund balance analysis. As you know, that our fund balance requirement of 15% is based on um, the estimated revenue um, that we have out there, um, actually based on budget expenditures. But we use estimated revenue right now to, to, to determine what the dollar amount might be. We gave you a chart, a very similar chart last year. We're trying to improve these, so I hope this chart was a little easier to read than last year's. But um, we gave you a sampling of... The 1415 proposed budget millage at 4.86 and the effect of the Avalorm at 96%. We budget here at the city of Oviedo at 96%. State law statute requires at least um, 95 or 96%. percent We've uh, in the past used 96. Um, and it tells you, if you look to the far corner, it tells you the effect of the fund balance based on the revenue amount of 24 million that the general fund would need to have at least 535,000 um, reserved for um, additional funding, excuse me, reserved within the fund balance. Um, we currently have in the fund balance at September 30th, 2013, 3.1 million. And um, that does meet our 15% uh, reserve. Um, the next one we selected was item B, which was a decrease in the millage for the general obligation voted debt. Otherwise, this year we went from 0 0.2746. I don't work at 2.27 down to 0.2546. I apologize. Um, so we had a reduction of 0.0195. Um, so if you converted the savings in millage per se from the debt service to the general fund, it's the 0.0195. We gave you the equivalent of what you would do with that if that's what you chose to do to keep the millage rate in total, the two together, um, at the um, 5.11. And then we just kind of gave you a, a, a variations of a, of a tenth so that you can look to see, um, sorry, um, by point one, by point two, all the way down through the list, just to kind of give you an idea of different millage rates you might choose. We can definitely look at others if you wish for us to, but we just want to give you an idea of the millage rate that you might have us look at, the effect to the fund balance, and the effect to the estimated revenues um, that those millage uh, that Avalorum dollars bring in. 
And then number uh, C is the projected decrease. The Seminole County School Board is decreasing their millage rate this year. So we just showed you the offset. If you chose to take that millage rate, add it to our millage rate to keep a, um, a neutral millage rate, I won't say a neutral cost, but a neutral millage rate um, to the uh, citizens that you could so choose to, to do that. And again, gave you the corresponding effect to fund balance um, and the 96% um, of Avalorum and the total estimated revenues. So I'll answer any questions you might have there. Okay. James said every point one brings in 190. Is that about what we're looking at? Every point one in millage? At the estimated uh, perspective, sir, I'm just looking at the column. At the fund balance, sir? Mm -hmm. I didn't, okay. At the alarm revenues at 96%. It looks yes, like sir. Every point one that we go up brings in about 190,000, mm. 170,000. Yeah, it varies a little bit, but that's true. And then out of that additional 15% of that has to go into fund balance. That's correct. Yes, sir. Right off the top. Yes, sir, we that's do. Not, that's not 190000 of free money. No, sir, it is not. We take the 15% right from the beginning because that is a requirement per our policy. And then if we have spent any money in the current year, we have to take that into consideration also um, as far as spending any of your fund balance. If we've brought to you a need to spend some of the one-time money, so to speak, then we would have to replenish those funds. The um, next attachment is the property tax comparison attachment. I'm going to kind of skip over the trim one. They're very lengthy, and, and if you have any questions, I'll be glad to go through them. But I gave you a couple uh, that are very lengthy in the sense the trim and the um, revenues, the state revenues. Those are pronounced from the state. I could answer any questions you might have, but I'm just going to kind of skip those and go to the city ones. And then if you wish for me to go back to the others, I'll be glad to. Is that okay? The property tax comparison, we have tried to look at Seminole County, the school board, the St. John's, and the Oviedo military as well as the voted debt. We went back to 2006 to give you a picture of that. Um, just kind of a sampling. If you look in 2007, the total millage for all of those uh, taxing agencies or authorities is 17.2031. This year, 2014, the proposed is 18.2176. We have seen um, some, looks like our uh, 2010, no, 2013. 2013, it was 18.7, so that looks like that's about the, um, other than the 2006 year, it's about the highest year that we see in total. But we just kind of gave you an, a, a variety of years starting at 06. There was no rhyme or reason to that, just chose enough years to give you a history. Hey, Robin, I think if you go back beyond 2006, the combined goal was even higher. We can do that, sir. I didn't, we didn't look further back, but I'll be glad to do that if that helps. Just making a point. Okay. Thank you. We gave you some um, um, uh, information. What we did is we called the property appraiser, and they assisted us in giving us an assessed value, median assessed value for the city of Oviedo. It's approximately 146000 And um, if we use that and compute taxes that would be payable on a home at that price, assessed value again of 146,000 even at 4.8626 for our for the city um, um, millage rate a citizen typically would see around nine dollars and 33 cents now I say that because they could be in a situation where they're still being assessed at three percent per year increase based on when they purchased their home and the, the the property assessed value as to where they're at so that can fluctuate some that is the property appraiser kind of works that out in their formula it's not a formula we would necessarily have that I could say 14 of the 18 homes had no increase but four of them did it's, it's not something I would know so we just try to give you an average if you look at the 5.0434 millage rate, the average home for this year would look at about $27 for the year. And we just provided you, just for information, if you went out to the 5.6126 millage rate, it would be about $83. And the 5.6126 re reflects a 0.75 mil. Um, again, it was just information that we were trying to provide as much as we could. We can work up anything that you request. Kelly can do that for us um, and give you an estimate if you would like to see anything. And I'll be glad to answer any questions if you happen to have any. Anything on this one, guys? 
Uh, Robin, can you tell me again what the a millage rate would be for that $27? You gave us three figures, 933, 27, and 83. Okay, um, I'll state it. 4.8626 was the $9. Uh -huh. 5.0434 is the 27. Okay. And 5.6126 is the 83. Gotcha. Thank you. I, um, during the course of the discussing some of these uh, budgets with um, you guys um, as a council, I found out there were a couple of, of uh, graphs that some of you might like to see. I did put one in here on the property tax cap per capita. I hope that that meets with your um, expectation. Um, I would be glad to explain it, but if we use the per capita uh, property tax um, within our dashboards that we provide you quarterly, and we updated it, it went back to 2001. Um, and I, I would be glad to answer any questions. Uh, 2001, we had a property tax revenue of 5.4 million. Um, our property per tax was 200, per $200.51. Cents. Then we went to um, 2013, 9.5 million at 273. Um, but we just uh, provided that information. I'm not sure um, if there's more that I can provide you, but I thought this would be a good time to go ahead and provide that to you and answer any questions, or we may need to do some more analysis and bring it back to you on the 25th if there's more information that you would like to see. Well, it does seem that the revenues have gone from 5.4 mil to a high of 12 to 9 where we are now. Is yes, sir. Yes, sir. 12 and in 2007 when things were pretty much peaking. This is only what's generated from property tax. Only property tax, that's it. We only receive, you know, in this year's budget, um, there's about 13 million of 9.5, or 9.5 million for, uh, for the Avalorm taxes. 13 is other sources that we receive. And those other sources are state monies, and those state monies can change at any point, any day, and we don't know where we stand with those monies from year to year. Um, the state may choose to adjust the formulas, and those numbers could change. And we, we're seeing a little bit of that that happened this year. Communication service tax. We, we lost $130,000 this year. The state changed the formula just a little bit, so we had a reduction. So um, some of them are dependent on the half cents, dependent on sales tax, and then uh, so forth. So um, this is only a portion of our of our revenues. Okay. Any questions, guys? Keith? No. no. Okay. But I want to see things. You're welcome, sir. General fund budget, a millage equivalent. We gave you a, um, a printout that has two years of information on it. Um, we tried to look at millage Which right. Chart, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, General fund budget millage equivalent. Yes, sir. General fund budget millage equivalent. <clears throat> Seven. <clears throat> Let me tell you what it is, sir. I'm is sorry. Is that loaded up on the computer over there by any chance? Yes, we can. Can we get it up on the screen? Yes, sir. I'll give Kelly just a minute to bring it up if you're okay. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> Can't really see it. <clears throat> I know it's a small print. We apologize. <laughs> Excel. Um, we provided you two years of information here. What we did is we, tr we tried to keep in mind, as, as mentioned earlier by the city manager, if we took um, a look at our millage rate and tried to put other items um, in the um, perspective of millage, the cost, we, um, we looked at that and we said, okay, um, legislative and executive for 1415. You'll just scroll down, Kelly, a little bit. Um, if you, uh, to operate those departments, it's 0.375. To operate the Human Resource Department, it's a point two zero. I will round up on this just because we're giving you information. So, um, for finance, it's a point seven nine millage rate. Management services, a point one two. Development services, a point two three. Public works, a one point one. Public safety is a five point five eight. Of that, police departments three point three, and fire departments a two point two seven. Recreation and parks is a one point two five. Miscellaneous, it's 0 .0021. Debt service is a 0 .63 uh, and transfers at a 0 .39. The total is 
total millage rate for this city for those divisions. And that's for the, from an operating perspective. And, that, and that's if we were totally dependent on millage to fund everything. That's correct. If we were totally dependent on millage rate, we would need 10 mills to pay for this city uh, versus our 4.8626 that we right now are, are, uh, are balanced at for the current year. But we thought that was a, a kind of a good um, picture to see, to have an idea of what each department and, and, and function mm -hmm. um, is uh, reliant on and how much of the general fund budget is um, applied, mm -hmm. if you want to look at it from that perspective. And in your budget book, there's also a, sh um, a schedule. It's called an appropriation schedule. It also shows some of this general information. Any questions, guys? Keith, Cindy? No. All right, okay, take time. The next schedule is a personnel summary. <clears throat> the schedule represents the 15 positions that are at part time that we were um, looking to try to move to full time represents their costs, so whether we could fund them or not currently. As you'll notice in the far right corner, there's a FY14, 15 funded and an unfunded. So we gave you the listing of uh, positions we were able to fund. We tried to convert most of the parks and recs positions to full time because there is a, um, an effect um, that if they are not working um, at 40 hours, I have to have seasonal positions out there seasonal money um, for the public works director to be able to take care of the, um, the kids, the programs, and so forth. So there's a trade-off. We did have an increase to go from part-time to full-time, but if I don't have those funds, I have to have funding in the seasonal. So we tried to implement those changes in that division first because of, the, of it being a direct effect to revenue and to expenditures. The request in new positions, the planner, the records clerk, excuse me, skate park coordinator. We have um, maintenance workers, three of them for Ovid on the Park, a pool tech uh, for Ovid on the Park, a building custodian Ovid on the Park, and three rec aid specialists. Um, also, that will support um, combination of public works and Ovid on the Park. As you notice in the 1415 funded, the positions we funded were the Ovid on the Park direct um, positions, and those we funded for five months. We anticipate opening and, and being able to uh, take care of that for that period of time. We so had, I'm sorry. On those requested new positions, the only ones that are funded currently are the five for Oviedo on the Park. That is correct, yes, at sir. At the 5.04 or at the 4.86? They are funded at the 4.8626. Okay. And then going up to the full time, the part time to full time. The 10 of the positions are at the 4.8626. The others are requested. Um, yeah, yes, sorry, <laughs> the second uh, question myself there. The others are part of the uh, additional, okay. the other five. And none of these others, utility tech? Okay, those output. are funded. They're different funds. Okay. So the, the, the stormwater uh, system technician is the fund 138, which is our stormwater fund, mm -hmm. and that was it. We were able to fund that with the revenue to expenditure ratio and able to uh, take care of that. 401 um, is our utilities fund, and we were able to fund um, some positions there. One's in customer service utility billing office. The other three are in the public works utility technician um, and maintenance worker positions. They're not necessarily all funded for the entire year because the, the um, utility technician, equipment operator, and the maintenance are dependent on new programs that the public works director is implementing next year and is not needed for an entire year. Same as the stormwater technician position. What about the fleet uh, number 504? The 504 is a full-time position for the entire year. It's for the fleet division. And it's funded. And it's funded. At which millage? Um, it is funded at the 4.8626 millage. And then the salary adjustments? The salary adjustments, none of them have been funded at this point in time. We um, pulled them out because they're part of the impact process in which we need to be able to do the study and to see what the effect may be and the true um, salary adjustments might be, and those, of course, are not funded at this point. Okay. Any questions, guys? No? Okay. Okay. Um, we just gave you a, a table on city pension contributions. Um, 
just to kind of just show you that um, the city has general employees that we have through ICMA, uh, the current fund level is at 5%. The police department and the fire department are both uh, will see redu reductions next year. Um, the 13-14 police department rate was at 21.38. The 14-15 is at 19.28. Do we have that pie chart to put up? <clears throat> yes, sir. If we could try to follow along with the pie charts and stuff, that would be great. Thank you. Get, make that one so everybody can see it. Everyone can see it. They can't read it. You can just skip through the numbers. Uh, come down a little bit. There you there go. You go. Okay. Thank you. So the uh, police department is seeing a, a reduction from 21.38 to 19.28 in next year's budget, as well as the fire department is uh, uh, adjusting from 11.10 to 8. And these are based on our actuary studies that the finance director um, requests each year, and we bring those back to you. And, of course, it's based on some of the funding um, as to whether or not their investments have paid off. That percentage can change, as well as number of, employ uh, number of their employees that's retiring out of the plan, and there are several other factors. Um, what, what, what are the total dollars that we're putting into contributions? We, the, the total pension, pension contributions for the city. How much the total is one million one hundred thirty-five thousand five eighty-nine for next year. And this year's one million two hundred fifty-five thousand six hundred eighty-five. All righty. And general employees are how much of that? Um, general employees are one hundred eighty-two thousand and seventy-six dollars. Police. Police is current year. I am stating current year. Current year, police is 735,368. Fire department, 338,241. And this is on top of their contributions. Th that is correct. This is city contributions. And the city has to pick up the difference. So I, I gave the chart to show you that um, in 11-12, the, some of the rates were lower. They, they increased in the 12-13. They may have reduced in the 13-14 or the 14-15. But the numbers, as they play out, the city is responsible to pick up the difference. So if there's an increase to the fund on the actuary side, then the city picks up that difference. If there's a reduction, obviously the city that year picks up that savings. But it's, a, a, it's based on the actuary study, and it comes in each year. We'll have to see where we are. Okay. Any questions on that one, guys? Cindy? I'm sorry, I can't see. No. You good? Okay. okay. Capital outlay. There, there were actually two different... Um, <laughs> There are actually two different reports, and then I also provided you some of the backup. Um, the very first one is Which one from, are we going to? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sir, it's the Capital Outlay Program. Thank you. Um, and it starts out, it has Fund 302. I'll let Kelly try to find that one real quick. Paul, can you show her where that one might be? We had, again, several people working this, so one second. Um, 302 is our vehicle now we replacement. we know what the clerks feel like, so they're getting more experience. <laughs> there you go. That's it. Um, the first one we talk about is Fund 302, which is our vehicle replacement plan uh, fund um, in which we have in this year's budget. There we go. We have a message sign. Um, Thank you. In, in, in the way that you can read to tell which department these may be supporting, just to give you give you a heads up of the county string and so forth. The first three digits on that uh, county string has to do with the fund, and 302 is vehicle fund. The next four is the department in which it supports. So 2101 is the police department. 2201 is the fire department. 4100 is public works. 7200s are all going to be parks and rec. So that you can kind of tell which division this may be supporting by looking at the accounting string. Not sure how much information you've been provided in the past on that. So we have a message sign and uh, some portable radios, um, some um, tools, accessories, imaging, bunker, it's various, fitness, uh, gator utility vehicles. These are all go through the F fleet division manager, Steve Williamson, and he approves these based on our five-year vehicle equipment replacement plan. So the reason you see these on here is they are, have either uh, hit their five years, seven years, maybe they already um, have already been um, um, 
they're, they're already down. Um, so, but we will go through the disposal process. If any of them are in a position where they could be traded or sold, we will obviously look into doing that. But these are for replacement similar like items in most cases. And they're funded. They are funded, yes, sir. Within the 320 account, the next account down there is Robin, the. Oh, yes, sorry. Before you go on, can I just ask a question? Sure. What is a Sand Pro? <laughs> Drew, what the heck's a Sand Pro, buddy? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Drew, handle that. Well, Sounds we, like something that drags for the baseball. That's what we bike. use for the baseball fields. Oh, it's a okay. piece of equipment we use for dragging All baseball right. fields. Okay, thanks. The next fund is the uh, techno uh, technology improvement plan, uh, and that is Fund 320. That's our replacement plan. Um, within that, we already have funded the uh, computer replacement plan, which is 72,000. This is two additional computers that Public Works is willing to pay for. They actually we do a transfer, so they actually pay for that, and then the funds go into this account. So that we just show that separately, so that you may see that. And then within the 330, which is our facility, general facilities improvement plans, we are, um, the 1910 tells you that is facility maintenance that is handling this work. Um, we've got an elevator upgrade, I believe, for the um, annex building, for the annex building. Um, the roof assessment program, a quality insurance program at the Riverside Park, and some flat roof at the, um, for the records building, in which we're looking at that building to see if that would be an appropriate um, a way to use the funding. We may have some other um, options available to us rather than to re-roof a building. We may have in the building that we have found. So we may have a little bit of savings. We'll bring that back to you in August. But that has came up since uh, we, they submitted the budget request. And where is that building? I'm sorry. The water plant. Okay. okay. Um, we just don't have assessments of the cost to, to make the changes. We have to do a little bit of work over there, right, Chief? Have to do some work piping and so forth. Also known as the bunker. So we would uh, turn in an adjustment to you of that fifteen thousand to the needs that might be identified over there. The um, I, I kind of just want to bring up the unfunded items here. Um, most of these are going to be um, IT items. Um, part of the reason is that's a transfer from the general fund, and the general fund has to be able to fund these items. These fund, these, this particular fund is not a self-funding fund. There's no revenue comes in. This was, was $108,000, and um, at this point in time, we didn't have the funds to fund it. On top of that, we also have a, a program in place right now or a, uh, a plan with EPIC, in which um, the finance director is working with them and they're doing a needs assessment based on um, our positions that we have, based on the type of equipment we have, and they will bring that study and conclusion back to you during the year. Um, and I would anticipate that would be the 14-15 year. And there will be a, um, at that point in time, I believe a list of uh, items, a long list, um, and that would be up to you as a council to decide how we might fund those items. So that is something I will tell you is coming up. The IT stuff. Yes, sir, the That's IT stuff. Councilman Schenck perked up there. Yes, that is a... <laughs> Um, so, um, and I don't know that we have a date on that, but I would say in the 14-15 uh, time period. Is that okay. correct? Those are the items within the capital funds. The second page, which... Um, to within this document. So a few pages back, pa uh, past your capital outlay request funds, past these items. Okay. So go back a few pages, and you will see one that has capital outlay that just has a short list, and it's general fund. Hang on, I'm still going. It is about four pages cool. from the back. So it's pretty far back there. It's yes, four, four, back, four pages from the end. Just keep going. It's all over there. Okay. Um, we have a few. There? I'm sorry. Wait for Council Let's keep Oh, sorry. Okay. 
Um, there's a couple items on this list. For the police department, we have some vests and some radars and lasers. And for the Parks and Rec Department, we have some all-in-house office furniture. We anticipate that project to be completed very soon, so we have to purchase uh, some furniture for there. Um, spinning bikes and some pool vats for the Riverside Pool. Mm -hmm. Um, also there, you will see it's Fund 138, which is the stormwater, and there's a program, an MP NPDES major outfall water sampling program study for 17000 um, and again, funded from within those funds. As you see, the unfunded request, um, splash zone, uh, rifles and accessories, um, uh, personal cameras, video storage, uh, some tablets, message sign, and we, we funded some of the um, all-in furniture. We were not able to fund all of that, so some of that has been funded, and we hope that we have something left uh, um, in our reserves to be able to make up the difference of that. So I will say that um, these items, some of the items, and I'll point out specifically the rifles and accessories. Um, within the fund line item that we fund accessories and equipment for the police department, they maintain the same dollar they had last year. It's just these were over and above dollars that they requested that were into the new year numbers. So we maintained last year's level and provided them the same dollar amount that they requested last year. Um, it was um, the rifles and accessories was a um, it happened to be 12,000. That's what they requested for rifles. They are at liberty to adjust what they purchase in that accounting string as long as it's still like items and still make the, meet the needs of the department. We reduced the dollar to the current year numbers. So they were they came in 12,000 above last year's or the current year. I'm sorry, I'm already into last year, but they come in above 12,000 above the current year numbers. We just cut them at the current year numbers. Okay. Does that make sense? Okay, if you're ready, I'll move on to the very last schedule, which is the financial impact of the proposed budget. Ready? Everybody there? Good. Okay. Wait, council over there. Wait, sorry? Do you have it open? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Repeat it. Okay. okay. Um, this is the first time we provided a schedule like this to you. What we did um, was we tried to look at out years next year, the effect of what you adopted this year. Um, again, it's an estimate, a projection. There could be some things that change that are altered, you know, that alter these numbers during the year. We looked at personnel costs first. Um, if you fund the 1.5% for all cities, next year's effect would be 164000 to the general fund budget, additional based on, you know, where we end up this year. The police PBA adjustment will be another 280,000 next year, 280 this year, 280 next year, based on a two-year plan. The uh, five-year five uh, Oviedo on the part positions, they are only funded this year at five months, so next year it's a full 12 months. And then we have some additional positions at Oviedo on the park, um, four of them, and that's to take care of. Um, the um, amphitheater that's to take care of those type of areas where we need to stage someone. It could be the boathouse. It could be the, um, thank you, because it could be another custodian. But it's positions to support that program. With that being said, we, we bit, did load into the budget presented to you tonight the positions and the operating costs Four of it on the park within fund or accounting string um, department 7212. We know that we will be bringing back to you at the August 25th meeting some options to look at, not just going with the in-house but as an outside contract, that type of thing. But we loaded in those numbers so that you have an understanding of the cost for next year if you do not choose to go with an outside contract or adjust those numbers if that's what you choose to do. So the effect right now estimated on the positions is $655,000 to the general fund uh, budget, which will be somewhere around the $24 million. So you have to add that on, to, on top of this year's projections. Um, we have fund 138, another the position that we mentioned earlier. Next year is at 30,000. Fund 401, those were the positions that, you, that I mentioned to you earlier that we had funded. 86,000. <clears> the fleet mechanic was already funded for the entire year, so he will roll into it, but he is in effect. 
than the debt that we presented you in Fund 201, 203, and 205. Uh, 203 is your GO, and 201 is your uh, lease, and 205 is the regular debt. But you will see that we have funded in the current year a fire engine and a fire rescue. We will begin paying debt on that next year. In the uh, request, there's always also been an additional fire engine and fire rescue, which will see the effect of that the following year. So that's in this year's budget one, and then next year's another set of those. So you're going to see the effect within two years, four, four units. Eleven police vehicles for this year, a dump truck, a mower, tracker, uh, a backhoe, and a dump truck sweeper to the tune of about 317,000. Now, 50 of that 317 does belong to, to uh, stormwater, but those are just estimates. We, we don't, haven't actually gone out to lease yet, so our numbers could be off a little bit. Um, we've estimated about the 2%, just over 2% for a lease option. Three, 3%, okay, 3% is our, um, what we've estimated the lease would cost us. But we felt like that we needed to give you some kind of idea of the cost and the impact into out years of the budget that you're looking at for this year. So the total general fund there is 922000 Total stormwater is 80000 And total utilities is 86000 And again, that's it's just an estimate that uh, we did pro try to provide that. Couple more things and I'll be through. <laughs> um, we've had a, a couple of uh, uh, requests from you during our meetings, um, and I have tried to send most of the information to each of you, and I hope that you've received it. I sent out today the CEI costs, and I'm not sure if any of you have any questions on that. Um, Public Works Director is here. I'm sure he'll be glad to answer any questions you might have um, on those, but I did send that out to you. That was requested. We, um, Kelly, can you pull up the um, salary information, please? The um, salary increases and decreases over the years. <laughs> the chart. Um, we had a request to look at the salary. Um, these were general employees only. So we went back to 2005, um, and we can show you that in 2005, the general employees received a 5% increase. In 2006, 7, they received a 5. 2007, 8, they received a 5. 2008, a 3%. 2009, 0. 2010, 0. 2011, 12, 2%. 12, 13, 1.5, 13, 14, 1.5, and 14, 15, a 1.5. Those are the increases that the general employees. Um, the police and fire, of course, are by contract, and we can provide you that information, but we've, we have done that also in the past, so I wasn't sure if you would like that. What we also did is the red line that you see here, see here is the change in um, insurance, the cost of insurance. So if you will notice that in 08, 09, and 910, even when our employees did not receive any salary increase, they did have a little increase on their insurance. Um, we are seeing a, a steady rate now of our insurance at us, you know, with us being self-insured um, at 240.03. Um, that's based on the family coverage. So we gave you, you know, we, we have several different ones, but we looked at families, our, our plan that's most used at this point in time. Just giving you an idea of how insurance has been affected or how it affects our employees as well as their salary increases. Um, and we can obviously put a little more into this and provide you more information. Um, we started working on this on, on late Friday and working on it some today, so I'm sure we can gather more information if you'd like to have more. It, it appears to me that over six years, it's six and a half percent. Um, Kelly, you have percent that percentage. It's, it was 4.4, uh, for the general employees, an average was, I think, 4.45. Yes. Well, if you start from 2009, it was zero, zero, two, <laughs> 1.5, 1.5. Oh, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm counting 14. Uh, okay, the whole zero, so... Right, so if you want to do it for five years, it's 5%. Mm -hmm.
Because you have two, you have zero. Oh, so the average is one point. Yeah. Okay. Um, if you will place up there the um, property value increase table. We also received some information, um, and of course the property appraiser has not sent out anything. Um, reference to possible increases or where we might stand for next year, just to kind of give you an idea when you when you were looking at that projected um, adjustments to next year. Okay. Um, and our gross taxable value for the current year, 2.038 billion. Um, if you look at a 7% increase, an eight, a nine, or a 10, we could look at conceivably next year. Can you blow that up just a little bit, Kelly? Are bigger screens in the budget anywhere? <laughs> okay. So at 7%, um, the, um, the variance from the 04, 14, excuse me, 14, 15 proposed to, to that at a 4.86 would be about 660,000. Um, a seven, an eight percent would be seven sixty, and so forth. Of course, this doesn't take into account any of the, you know, fifteen percent or anything. We were just trying to give you an idea again, based on the property appraiser and what happens over the next year. Um, some of the increases that we may see here, based on the millage rate. So we left the four point eight six and eight six two six in there. We can put it in at any number that you wish for us to look at, and estimate what we believe the revenues could be next year with all things holding true and at a 7% increase, 8, 9, 10. Um, and we can change that interest, that percent of increase to anything you wish for us to look at. And that's based on 6 to 10? Is that what you did that on? It, we, did, we did individual, so we did 7% and 8% flat percent. And we'll send this information out to you. I just uh, felt like we would have it here, and then we'll send it out to you as supplemental information. Um, and I'll place it on the council SharePoint so that you can see that also. Um, so again, these were things. for next year, which reflects 13, 14 values. That's correct. So we're not going to see the slowdown until two the more year years. after 14, 15. And then hopefully growth around here will start to hit. Yes, sir. So we, you know, there, so, has been, there has been a leveling off. Right. And there's usually a lag when you're bringing the new places on of about a year. So, so again, this, this information was requested during the meetings with um, you, so we didn't have time to send it all out at, at, at one time, so, but I wanted to bring it tonight and provide it to you, and then we will be glad to send it out to you after the meeting. Um, and I think I have one more item, and that will be it. We had a request for um, the millage rate by year. It's really just a summary of some of the other information, and we'll actually just send that out to you. It just um, it indicates the, um, the millage rate of the other cities within um, Seminole County, millage rate by year. Um, for the 14, when we called around, <laughs> apologize, called around to try to find out the millage rates, um, of other cities tentative at this point in time. Altamont um, is reducing their millage rate from 5.2199 to 5.0769. Castleberry is staying the same at 5.4500. Lake Mary is remaining the same, 3.5895. Longwoods remain the same, 5.5000. Sanford is 6.8250, and they are remaining the same. Winter Springs has some voted debt, so they have a regular millage rate of 4.8699 for a total, or their regular city is 4.7599 with their voted debt at 0 0.1100. Um, so we thought we would just provide this to you. We also showed the change in millage since 2003 as a reduction of 0.4724, which is attributable to the um, GEO. So each year that we've had some reductions in the GEO or an increase, the total adjustment has been a decline of, um, and voted, sorry, I apologize, voted as a decline of 0.2254. Um, 
the in, in all fairness, Robin, on that chart, and it's hard to see, but some of those other cities did millage increases along the way during the downturn that we never did. Yes, sir, especially last year and the year before, several of them had uh, some significant increases. Okay. Yes, sir. And, and we go back to 2003 so that we've provided you that, that you know, 10 years plus of history to, so that you may be able to see that. Um, and this is also the, based on their tentative, which um, we're not sure exactly where they have ended because they haven't all had their meetings yet. So some of these could have changed. I Can you provide that all to us electronically? We, yes, we will, sir. We'll provide that after the meeting. Please, uh, please don't print it out. It'll kill them. Don't worry. I won't. <laughs> I'll send you an email with each of the attachments and then put it on the council uh, intra, uh, website also, interested. Great. Thank you. Okay. And that is all I have unless you have questions for me. Hang on a second. Let me just see. Does anybody have any questions just yet? Nothing yet? Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Robert, you can let that tell over now. Yeah. <laughs> nice job, Robert. <clears throat> Mr. Cobb, do you have anything else to add, or staff have anything to add for us? No, Mayor, I have no more. All right. Well, Council, it looks like it's all been put forth in front of us, and now it's up to us. Is there any discussion? Councilman Schenk, go right ahead. Um, first, thanks to the team and to uh, Robin and Brian, and especially the team. I, I know they've thanked you, um, but I'll say my meeting in private, they said you guys were phenomenal. Um, I'll expound on what they said here, but they really gave you guys praise for uh, so much effort and work that you did and that you really uh, dove into this, as they said, and really provided a, a whole different atmosphere. and. Um, it was, uh, I don't want to say the word enlightening, but it really pulled things together and made it a, a great process. And I, I see the results. I think it was a, a, in terms of a budget, it was a very different approach and a different look that came to us. And I appreciate that. But they really had such great things to say uh, about you guys. So I really wanted to say that. Um, and thank you guys for the effort. I know it was a lot of work, and they had said you put in a t you really did take hold of it and, and put in a ton of work. And the thanks to the directors for giving them to over to budget. That was the other side of it. They said, you know, um, those people live there for a couple of days at a time and, and really put a lot of effort. So thanks for that, too. Um, I, I really appreciate the job, and I like everything that's sitting up there. Uh, I'm really aiming my, my concern, one concern that I do have, and I, I don't know if it was just me asking for it, if it was in there for me, the next year, the view of next year um, is a concern. Uh, we have 900,000 sitting in general fund that we've added on in, part, in, ha in, in costs that we're not fully f seeing this year or this upcoming year that are going to hit 1560 full year for us. And I really do look at that IT uh, needs. Uh, it, it's going to be a great need list in terms of personnel and equipment and other things that we're going to need and want. Um, that works for me. So I think we, you know, we have to look at the look at the budget this year with that in mind, and say, do we want to raise this year, or are we going to probably need it even more next year, so to speak? We might need it more next year than this year. Um, so I'm very inclined to go to four eight six two six, um, but one thing I'd like to look at for are the the economic development. I'd like us to consider looking at just like we did with the lobbyists is um, stop everything with economic development this year. Reevaluate the whole, what we're getting, what we're doing. I, I think the program isn't hitting what we've really wanted to hit. Um, and taking that money and uh, diverting it um, to the, one area is definitely to the salaries and seeing if we can do the economic, the uh, impact, impact study internally instead and uh, taking that $129,000, putting it towards $112,000 of the set aside. Um, and then, you know, whatever the remainder is and possibly trying to do it either in-house or at least starting it in-house, getting as far as we can uh, with the large needs that we know are there. 
uh, for the general employees and being able to fund them next year. Um, otherwise, like I said, I think everything else looks great that we can do. I, I you, you pulled out magic at 4826 to me. Um, and with just the, that one switch in my mind, I think we can cover the magistrate too at that. The 129, the 129, the economic development money, uh, and the, again, it's the incentives, but I think we look at that program on a whole and have to really delve into has it worked for us over the past uh, five, six years, what we're getting for it, what we want to do with it, and how we can utilize it in the future, possibly as we redevelop the downtown and, and aiming it more towards that. So that would be my only suggestion. I'll look at the 48626. Uh, there's some other things to do that we've discussed, um, the study that we got today the, um, that showed the, what, the, what was the, the, what, C, the CEI, uh, $750,000 in costs, I think 400 and something of ours, 300 and something from outside money, but if we can utilize that money and have on staff, that's a, our six years, I think it was $750,000, and if that's a staff position, we can look at to provide, you know, that we can have full time uh, with that type of money. It seems possible in my mind. I'm looking at the future. Are we going to need those services for the future? Um, and can we take that money in house and utilize that? And then we have, whether it's project management, et cetera, in house that we can utilize better. Things like that. I know we've, uh, as part in here, is looking at uh, some of our properties, etc. Looking at the properties that we own and, and uh, distributing those properties. Possibly, uh, we've got multiple properties. Because again, not on here, not in the future that we, in the near future, is redoing the police station, the fire station into the police station. Um, you know, long-term projects. It's Shane Kelly. It's been there for how many years and. Starting, starting the next, what do we do next? How do we start funding these things? You know, three to five years when hopefully all the things that we look at on our horizon really start hitting us, those will be, I know those will start, but we need to have that ready to go. Um, but I see a lot of positions that we're hiring this year. We've got 10 between last year, I think in this year, it's, it looks like over 10 positions. And then another 15 that we're moving to full-time positions. Um, plus, next year we're going to hire more. So we're increasing our load. Um, I, like I said, I, I think we may be looking at a similar or a rougher situation next year that we're going to really need to look at that millage raise. So. Okay. What's going to happen? Councilwoman? Okay. Um, I'd also like to thank everyone involved in this process. I think it was um, a fabulous idea to include people from other departments, and I'm glad to hear you're going to include the rest of the departments next year. Robin, you did a fantastic job, and I have to say it was the best budget I had ever seen. It was so transparent and so good and so clear that we weren't sitting in your office for hours and hours and hours, and I didn't leave there with my head filled. So that's a good sign. <clears throat> I like the way you, you proposed everything that you, what we could do with the current millage rate and what we need. And I do see that there are a lot of needs. Um, we have been very fortunate where we were able to run our budget the past years um, on the current millage rate but it was, it, it was a little bit at a cost to other, um, our employees, and a little bit of the service. I think the service remained excellent, but I think we asked too much of the employees. They were wearing two and three hats, um, and really, really putting their all into this job. And I don't think they would not do that um, if we had more employees. But I think getting the city back um, as a whole is very important. I think our public safety <clears throat> departments, I think we need them to keep them at a competitive rate. Um, and our general employees, they certainly deserve a raise. Um, I'm not going to get into the weeds of, of moving things, but I did see uh, over there a planner. 
personally, I would like to see a planner position in there because I think with the, all the building that's going on, we we shouldn't be bogged down and have those people working and not have projects moving forward because if they don't move forward, then we're not bringing in that revenue. So I think that that's an important position. I agree with Councilman Shank that uh, the IT department is extremely important, our website, social media. Um, so I would like to see somehow get that in there, maybe not, maybe to replace something else. Um, uh, but I look at all that and I see it all as important. So I will leave that up to you <laughs> to make that, that need. Um, <clears throat> I, I agree with Councilman Chang too with the economic development. And when, when, we dis when I had my meeting, I had thought, well, maybe it might be more um, cost effective for us if we were to hire somebody in house who, and just concentrate on Oviedo. That's all they would work on is Oviedo. Um, and we could just direct all that money um, to that. But it's something, something to consider, have another person here, than opposed to um, paying a company to do it when they represent other cities also. Um, and that's really all the notes that I had right now. Uh, except for the part time, and I'm sure you did this, but I have to ask the question: Have you, since we cut those part time positions, or cut those positions to part time, you re-looked at each position to make to see that you needed to increase it back to full time, or is it okay to leave them a part time? Uh, no, ma'am. We did look at each one. The city manager asked each department that had part time positions to go back, see if uh, analyze the position to see if. The needs were there. Um, what we did do is within the Parks and Rec Division, the um, uh, Parks and Rec Development or Director, excuse me, um, went back and looked at if we converted his positions to full time, he reduced seasonal money. So he mm -hmm. actually said, okay, if we convert these this many positions to full time, then take this amount of money in seasonal because I won't need those positions. So there's positions that have been cut, but we don't budget seasonal at a FTE. We budget it at a dollar amount. So we cut forty to fifty thousand in the seasonal budget um, to accommodate the adjustment mm -hmm. of these positions. Um, and not all the thirty hours are on there. I can tell you I have one employee that's not on there. We haven't determined um, the the needs. Okay, mm -hmm. so we did not add that. There's a, probably a couple others, maybe two others, um, just because we, we did not come up with what are we going to have that person do, you know. We're already covering the, the position um, at 100% from, from other employees, so we may continue to do that. So we did not just assume that every one of those positions would come in and fulfill a full-time mm -hmm. position. All right. Thank you, Robin. Um, I'd just like to say again, I think it's very, very important that we keep um, our public safety competitive so that we keep them here and have the best level of service to our to our um, community anything else that's it for now for well, now it is, uh, he wants to go first. <clears throat> well I'll agree with uh, a lot that I heard from my from my right but just a couple comments I want to make first off you know it's nice to see you all here um, you know we don't get often that we have you all here in front of us so I just want to say and I'm sure everybody else will agree I just want to say thank you for the last six seven years where you guys stuck with us in those lean years when it would have been you know pretty easy for a lot of you to walk away and you didn't so that was that was really good I think um, Brian hit it right on the head you know times were really really rough there and it was not fun sitting up here and making some some decisions but now it's time to to rebuild and you know and i can single out three groups here you know first off i think you you've seen the budget now i think you know this council is very serious about protecting this city um our police officers i'll hit them first you know i i say this to the chief all the time <clears throat> you know riding home sometimes down 419 i see you guys making this lonely walk in the dark to the side of a car you know what is that worth you know, so, you know, I appreciate you guys immensely, and I know so do my four colleagues. So it, it's a long time coming for you guys to get where you need to be. Um, and I think what we're trying to do in this budget and next year is to tell you guys that 
We appreciate you stay here. I think we're better than Orlando anyway. It's a lot nicer <laughs> around here. We got some nice things coming on. So, thank you to the police department. Uh, I think when we call 911, we know that uh, you know criminals already know it's not easy to get away with things in Oviedo. You know, and then on to our fire department. It's very comforting for me. You know that when I dial 911, I have the most awesome you know EMTs, paramedics coming our way. <clears throat> You know, we have two awesome chiefs uh, running these departments, so we have the best. And for me, that's what drives me to make sure that we have the best public safety out there. And then, you know, last but not least is our general employees, you know, the people that really make it happen and make us all look good. You guys, for what you went through the last six, seven years, that was really hard, you know, going home and no raise and things like that. So. Um, you know, Brian, again, he hit it right on the head. It's time to rebuild the city, and I, I think uh, we're, we're taking that step tonight. So, um, you know, there's just a couple of things. I mean, you know, like the economic development plan, I, I completely understand it. Um, you know, the thing you all have to remember is it's, it's, it's a good program, but it's always subject to the city council's funding. So, you know, I wouldn't advocate dismantling it. I would, you know... I would take a look at it. In-house person, I, I do agree, might might be something to take a look at. Um, you know, but the funding is only if we can afford that. And obviously, I always say we're going to pay the mortgage first, and that's the police, the fire, and the general employee. So they're they're going to come first. So, you know, I don't know if we should dismantle it. Um, I'm not sure why our new magistrate is costing us a millage rate. We had the one of the best ones up here ever. So, you know, that needs to be looked into. Um, I agree with my colleagues to the right, this salary study, although I understand that it's a much more broader study, I'm not sure that it's worth spending this money when I have other more important needs, a.k.a., you know, people. Um, so it's just something to throw out. And I do want to touch on something that Councilman Shank brought. You know, we can, we can up this, and I, you know, I think, it, you know, round numbers, over the last couple of years, we've probably cut five, six million dollars out of this budget, and now maybe we're putting back, you know, what this comes out to be, a half a million dollars, or, the, the, you know, the, the rate from 4.86 to 5.29, because like a quarter mil is about $250,000 somewhere. So, you know, we've cut an awful lot out of here, and, you know, the ultimate boss, the citizens, are going to expect all of us to perform well for them. And we can't do that if we keep losing people to other cities. So, you know, why nobody ever wants to look at it, you know, we really have to because the citizens owe it. But having said that, you know, Councilman Shank touched on something. We have some assets in this city, and I won't go into them, you know, by name, but there are some things in this city that we have bought that we're not going to use for five, ten years. Now, there may be some differences of opinion up here, but before this last, you know, uh, I think it's September, you know, late September, where we make this final call. Brian brought up another good point. We'll set this millage tonight. That gives us the room to take care of everything that was in the budget. But I would like to see before we make that final call in September that you bring back to us some of these facilities that we are not going to use. Now, there's always the, you know, the thought that we're going to use them down the road. But, you know, I don't want to pay millions of dollars for things that I don't need when I can use it in other areas. So. I think the budget was great. I think you all did a phenomenal job. I, I agree with Cindy. It was really one of the best ones where you, you didn't have to really hunt around. It was all right in front of you, laid out very clearly what it is. But, you know, my question every budget year is, are we done? And I think we're done except for that one thing. I want to see a list of our assets, and, and Robin and I have talked about it, and I'm sure the rest of you have. Just show us what we have out there. Do we still need these facilities? Are we going to use them? Are they obsolete and we don't need them? Because there's, there's some money out there that we could get back. So, you know, all in all, you know, I just want to say thanks again. We have a most incredible staff here. You know, my three groups, the police, the fire, and the general employees, you're all amazing. And, you know, we can't thank you enough for staying with us. And now, now the good times are going to come. I mean, all, all history shows that things are going to get better. You know, we get a little more bump in our property values and new things coming online like our hospital and, um, our new downtown is going to really make Oviedo, you know, a shining star. We're already at top ten, so let's go to top one, and we can't do it without you guys. So, you know, it's a good day. It, I feel good walking out of here tonight. There's no, it doesn't seem any more gloom and doom. We're going to get to a, a much better place. So, none of you better quit. Just stay here. We'll get you there.
That's all I have for right now. Thanks. <coughs> Councilman? Okay. Can you hear me in this one? It's two microphones. Well, first of all, Brian, I want to thank you and Robin and, and the, the whole team. Uh, I'm very proud of you. This product is uh, much more than I expected. We had some conversations a couple weeks ago, and I was not happy when I with what I saw and what I was expecting. So I, I give you kudos and, and for a job well done. Um, for the rest of you, I'll, I'll just tell you that we set some priorities for the staff. Uh, the number one uh, priority was to take care of our employees, especially our police officers, for the, the job well done they've done in uh, protecting us over the, the last couple of years in some uh, pretty tight economic times. So I think we've addressed that in this budget. And I really don't want to get down, as Cindy said, down into the weeds because uh, there is some, some room to maneuver. I, I think I would caution us all that uh, the era of doing more with less is not over. It's, it's going to continue into the future. We're going to have to do with more with less. We're going to have to do stuff in-house instead of contracting out. Uh, and we're going to have to maintain a tight budget. That's the way of the world, and it's the way it's going to be for the foreseeable future. So I would I would proceed with caution on increasing our headcount uh, because there's no certain future that we'll be able to afford it, and we'll have to go through a downturn and, and uh, reduce our, our staff again. So do the best you can with what you have and be very judicious in, in hiring. Um, having said that, I, I think this is a good budget. I've said for uh, how many years uh, that I've gone back in the history of Obito. They've set a 5.3 budget back to the 80s. Uh, when I got into office, the uh, the millage rate in the the uh, GOB was somewhere around 5.8. We went on a five-year downturn, reduced that to under five mils, and now we're now we're moving back up closer to where it should be at about the 5.3 rate. So, uh, and I think we ought to consider that as a policy to set a, a fixed rate for millage and GOB and set it and then forget it. Staff will know what they have to live, uh, what means they have to live in, and we don't have to play games with, uh, with a couple digits of uh, decimal points. So that's my advice to us all. And just in close, I just want to say that, uh, you know, the way I see the role of staff is to run the city. If you've got a budget, you're responsible, Brian, for running the city within that budget, and I think you're doing a great job. City Council, on the other hand, is, is charged with uh, setting the vision and making sure that we have a, uh, a growing, viable community into the future. So if we are looking at uh, reducing our assets, we need to look out five or ten years and make sure that we, as we grow and we add uh, amenities and, and we add features to the city that the, the citizens want, we don't cut ourselves off and, and uh, limit ourselves. With that, um, I'm done. Thank you. <coughs> well, not to sound redundant, but it was a, an excellent job Brian and staff, um, and all of you who joined the team. Um, I hope the experience was what you expected, and now you can all take it back to your departments and next year make them even better. Um, you know, it's been six years of downturn that it took us really to get where we are. And Councilman Hankin said it earlier. I mean, we always sit up here and we ask, have we cut it? Have we cut it? Have we cut it? Have we cut it? And, you know, we're starting to hit bone and marrow, I think, at this point. It is time to rebuild. I mean, Oviedo is a full-service city. That's what we are. That's what our residents expect. And that has a cost to it. So we'll have to discuss amongst ourselves how we achieve that cost. Tonight's really about giving ourselves flexibility. It's not about us, as Councilman Britton and Councilwoman Drago said, getting down into 
the meat and potatoes of what's going to be in the budget. That, that'll come at two hearings in September. Tonight, tonight's about the dollars that we're going to give ourselves to plan for the future. And I think that we saw that we have to give ourselves a little bit of flexibility this year, and we're probably going to have to do it again next year. It's not going to be solved all in one year. However, we do have to remain vigilant. You know, if we're willing to give folks flexibility, that doesn't mean we've said anything tonight. All that means is that we're going to sit and take the next month or two or six weeks, how, how much time it is, and really start to drill down into what we have. Multi-year issue, so we have to slowly climb out of it. As Councilman Britton just said, if we climb out of it too quickly, we'll be right back where we were. Robin, you mentioned on the employees, and again, I just want to paint a little bit of a picture. You know, when I looked at the numbers, you know, I added the numbers up. It's about, you know, 1%, a little over 1% for the past, over the past six years. But weren't there cuts to their 401 as well, contributions from the city? Yes, sir. I didn't see those on your chart, and I think that was more significant than the pay increases. Um, we did. You had that. Kelly, if you can pull that up. We did have, uh, for the general employees, the one chart that talks about pension, um, I think it was 2010-11, um, 9, 10, 10, 11, they went from a 10% down to an 8%, down to a 5% uh, contribution from the city, matching contribution. So I, I don't want to misstate the year, but I believe it was 8, 9. Okay, that's fine. You don't, you don't have to find it. That's, I, I just wanted to make the point that there was another component to this. Yes, sir. That needs to be factored in. You know, public safety, it goes without saying. I mean, that's, people have heard me say it many times. You know, really what we're charged with uh, services to the citizens are public safety, deliver the water, and pick up the garbage. You know, if we do that, 99% of our citizens, we're never going to hear from them. So, I mean, that, that one's a, a given, but, you know, our general employees have felt the brunt of this over six years. Yes, sir. So, so it is time to rebuild it. Now, before you sit, mm -hmm. the impact study has been brought up a couple of times, and again, we'll, we'll drill this down, but high-level thinking for a second. Isn't another component of that getting the city back to merit-based pay? Yes, sir. The team was um, established originally to look at merit systems for all employees. Um, and the team is comprised of about 20 employees covering every division within the city, every department. And um, in our discussions, we started meeting back in October. And by February, we, we were just meeting monthly. By February, we had determined as a team that without having some type of equity study um, to see where our employees were, were currently stood, it was kind of hard to look to see what type of merit program we could look at as far as increasing. Um, so as a consensus from that team, um, we requested um, at least the consideration of a, con a comprehensive um, benefit um, classification and study to be performed of every employee, and including the police and fire division, um, comparing them to cities that would be comparable to them as far as the population, as uh, even as far as being a suburb of a uh, suburban city of a of a larger um, area like we are with Orlando um, and that, and the like, um, and see where we stood, and then we can look at um, a merit program that we can implement. Um, that the employees can increase. We, we, the sampling we used was Colorado uh, State, and um, their merit program um, was based on a COLA being established um, at a certain percent, and then it picked up from there and said, okay, if you fell in this category, then your increase could be something else. Um, but it, they were very de de determined on each other, de um, uh, depended on each other, um, and that was kind of what we were looking at. And the only reason we looked at the study is because the study, I want to say, was 48 different unions involved in the state. We felt like that um, as we're regular, as well as general employees, that we could cover everything that needed to be covered. Um, and it was, so far, a very successful um, program. Um, and I'd be glad to give you the information from the government magazine that shows that program. And, but, and this idea came out of the group 
the employee group? Is yes, sir, the impact group. Yes, sir. Okay. We looked at um, probably somewhere around 10 to 12 different potential merit programs, and this was one of the ones we boiled down to. Okay. Robin. Thank you. Robin, yes. this, one of the things, didn't the state of Colorado, didn't they go through a similar study before they enacted their merit-based plan? They went through about three years of determining, yes, what to use. And, and it's a very, like I said, it is a very comprehensive, but they spent a lot of time on it. Well, yes, sir. I, again, now, I just wanted the 100,000-foot version okay. of it. We can, we'll have two or three more meetings to hash that out. Thank you, Robin. Uh, I do agree on the magistrate. I mean, I realize it's a small amount of money, but to see an increase, um, you know, that might uh, require some renegotiation. Uh, assets, I'm on board with Councilman Britton. You know, I'm, I, I do agree that you reevaluate your assets that you hold, but, you know, I'm not a fan of selling them. I, I think that even if you're not using them now, 20 or 30 years from now, the citizens may have a use for them of the city. I mean, look, look at all the assets we have. I mean, they all came from foresight back in the 80s and 90s when they accumulated them. So, but, you know, we'll hash that out. That's for council discussion another day, another time. Robin, I believe you are putting that together, correct? That list? Okay. And that'll be something that we'll have at the end of this budget cycle for discussion next year? Yes, sir. It'll be in the first. I, I think we're hoping to bring it at the end of the first quarter, Brian. Is that I believe what so. Finished? Yes, sir. When we had our discussions in June, uh, it was one of the items that council asked us to look at in 1415. So we were looking at trying to get it to you early so that it could be a discussion for the 1516 budget. Okay. You know, I heard, I heard some mention from councilwoman and others on, you know, a few items that, you know, we don't necessarily have in the budget at 4.86 or 5.04. You know, the planners, the web services, repairs and maintenance, you know, the branding that was never finished, the survey, the LDC rewrite isn't in there. So, I mean, these are things, I mean, obviously tonight's not the night, and we'll talk about economic development, we'll talk about other parts of the budget as we move along, and we'll be shifting and moving things but you know I, I I do believe we need to give ourselves some flexibility this year and then again you know we're going to be looking at the same thing next year more than likely so um, that's that's my two cents I mean what you put forth before us at 0.18 is nice I'd like to see 0.25 and uh, we can always roll it back but at least we give ourselves enough room that uh, we're not pinned in case we want to do something. If we decide to take more things out, well, heck, we just roll it on back. But, um, you know, way back, Brian and I were talking about it. We couldn't remember the year it was, but I think it was 2003. We actually set it half a mil higher, and we ended up rolling the whole thing back once we got down in the weeds and started picking apart all the little tabs that I see on this budget book. So, um, you know, that that is that would be my thought process. So let's go back over to council, see if we can get some consensus. Does anybody have anything else for staff? Up and down the dais? Can I get a motion from somebody on anything for discussion? I'll make a motion to adopt resolution 2868-14 as submitted. I have a motion. Can I get a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Councilman Britton, you do have the floor. I think it's a, a good budget. I think it gives us some flexibility. We'll talk uh, this month on what we want to do. Okay. Uh, good job uh, on the staff on putting this together. Thank you. Okay. Good. Councilman, you have the floor. Yes. I, I agree with uh, Councilman Britton on that. Um, I think we do need a little bit of room, like you suggested. And um, I think it's a good budget. Councilman Schenck? since I was off to the right? Uh, no. Um, you know, so I, I like setting it and forgetting it. So I'm more towards the 46, that's where I'm going to be. So. Okay. That's 10. Mm -hmm. You're up. Hey, do you want to close with anything? 
No, I just want to. I just want to remind everybody. We love public safety. We know that. Yeah, I know, but I'm just <laughs> want to. I just want to remind everybody because you say it. You didn't say it this year, but well, I think you did. Um, Who did say it? When, yeah, when you get the. Yeah, I think you said it. When you get these notices in the mail, realize that the key word in here is that this is tentative. And you know, there was the, the mayor just asked about this asset study. Okay. Well, I'm. Just, we're not going to drill into the weeds, but there's two big ones that I'm going to talk about in these budget hearings. So yeah, we may not have the study for next year, but it's possible that they could be there. So yes, I agree with the motion and the seconder. We should adopt this, give ourselves some room. But just to let everybody know, we still have some other options. And um, you know, one way or another, I think all the key things that we, we want to do are getting done this year. So I'm good. All right. Mayor. I'm sorry. Uh, just one procedural thing before you take your vote. Uh, we'll need to have the city attorney read the resolution by title. That would help. We'll get there. Don't worry about that. Thanks, sir. Uh, Mr. Grid, I do apologize. Skipped right over you. No problem. Whenever you're ready, Mr. Mayor. Go ahead. All right. Resolution number 2868-14, a resolution adopting the tentative millage rates to be levied for fiscal year 2014-2015 by City of Oviedo City Government, adopting the millage rates for 2014-2015 fiscal year for the okay. City of Oviedo at the overall combined rate of 5.29, excuse me, 5.2980 mills with 5.0434 mills for the City's operations and 0 0.2546 mill for payment on the 2003 general obligation bond, bond issue voted debt service expressing legislative and administrative findings and intent, establishing the date, time, and place for the first public hearing on the tentative millage rates to be September 10, 2014, and the first public hearing on the proposed budget on the same date at 6.30 p.m., and providing for implementing administrative actions, the savings provision conflict, severability, and effective date, and that's the resolution by title, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Groot. Just hang on one second, everyone. I'm just doing some quick math here. Mr. Mayor, hmm. may I make a comment before sure, go right we proceed? Ahead. I'm doing math. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Take a while. <laughs> Take your time. Um, I just want to say that this is not something that I take very lightly, and I'm sure that the rest of the council members don't take lightly either. It's something you toss and turn and think about and look at and read. And you look at the charts and you look at what's happened the past six years and um, what, what our employees have done, what, the, what our services have become. So you really have to take that into consideration, everything that everybody has put forth. When things were really bad, I feel as if we passed the savings on to um, our residents because it lowered their taxes. It lowered it at a time that things were bad and, and everybody was struggling to make ends meet. So that we, we gave that to them during that time. And <clears throat> yes, now things are starting. We're seeing some daylight. And, um, but I just want everyone to know that we take, take all of this into consideration. We think about it. We, we lose sleep over it, trying to do the right thing. Um, sometimes it's painful. Sometimes it's not what people want to hear. Um, but it's what we truly think we need to do to to make Oviedo the best that it can be. Thank you. Thank you. All righty. So we have a motion and a second. We've read the ordinance by title only. I'll just ask the motioner if you would consider 0.25 increase instead of 0.18. That would make uh, the total, that's the math I was doing, 5.36, which is really what it was all those years. Leave it like it is. Um, okay. I've got a note here from the city clerk that we need to uh, pay the motion. Uh, I'm going to take care of it. I'll, I'll do it for you. Okay. Yeah, I got it. Uh, no consideration of that from council? No? Okay. All righty. Then let me get to the part. We need to make a motion. I'd like to entertain a motion then. That we're now, Lonnie, we have the motion on the table to adopt the resolution. So you want me to read this statement? Yes, sir. And then we just vote on the whole thing as a big yes, package, sir. right? Yes, with, okay. with, with the millage rates and the uh, date of hearing. All right, date thank time. you. All righty. We'll state in the motion that the individual millage rate 
of the city of Oviedo would be 5.0434. That would be our tentative millage rate, correct, correct Lonnie? Yes, sir. All right, and the tentative millage rate for the GOB bond is 0 0.2546. That's right. We are going to schedule the first public hearing is when, Mr. With, Cobb? With the combined rate, too. Okay, the combined rate would be 5.2980. Yes, sir. And when is the first public hearing? Because we don't have that information here. That would be September the 10th. September the 10th, 2014. Yes, sir. Here in the City Council Chambers. And is that a 6.30 meeting? Yes, sir. That is a 6.30 meeting. So I'd like to add that to the motion. Agreed? Motion or agree? Agree. Seconder? Agree, yeah. Lonnie, we cover all our bases. You have covered all your bases, Mr. Mayor. All Thank right. You. <laughs> you would think after all these years I'd have that committed to memory. <laughs> all righty, guys. Motion is on the table to adopt the resolution. The millage has been stated. All in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Hey. Motion carries four to one. All righty. We are completed, concluded. The staff have anything else for us? Ms. Hayes, Mr. Cobb? Oh, yes, sir. I do have See, one yeah, item. There's always something. Thank you, Mayor. I do appreciate that. I do have Everybody one Everybody sit tight just a second. <laughs> uh, as we mentioned to you uh, in your individual meetings, we do have a grant opportunity that has come up uh, in the last week or two. Uh, it's a $250,000 grant, uh, and we do have some park improvements that qualify for it. Our grant writer is very optimistic that we could get them. Uh, the grant does carry a one-to-one -one match, so we would have to match as well for $250,000. And uh, but we we would have three years, correct? Yeah, we have three years to actually spend the money. So this isn't going to impact 14-15. At the soonest that we could even see it would be 15-16, but it may be later that later than that. But we and do that have. That money come out of capital improvement. Oh. Yes, sir. It would be coming out of capital improvement. And, uh, but we already have projects in the CIP that qualify for this grant that our uh, grant writer is very, uh, he has very good uh, high hopes for. Uh, Mr. Bower has stated that uh, there is funding to, for the grant writer to submit the grant. So uh, we just, but our policy states that we need to ask for your blessing before we move forward. So I wanted tonight. Consensus to, or motion? Consensus, consensus would be fine. Yes. Council? Yep. Yes, yes, yes. Five yeses. Okay, thank you, Mayor. Mr. Cobb, can I bring up one quick item? Yes, sir. Uh, and I'll just bring it up briefly to the council. And uh, based on our discussion tonight, you're all going to think I'm crazy. But uh, an opportunity for Aqua Utilities has come forward again. Everybody knows we looked at it four or five years ago. So uh, I have informed Mr. Cobb and Mr. Wyatt, Mr. Krasakis, I don't know if he's aware of it, but there isn't a utility he doesn't like, so we won't <laughs> talk to him about that. Uh, but the acquisition price would be much more in line with what staff came up with last time. So, uh, you know, this may be an opportunity that we want them just to go out and take a peek at. We have all the studies already, so it's really just a matter of updating what we have through uh, Terry Zaki and uh, take a peek and see what it is. There could be, just for the future, you know, the, the sewer plan out there alone, the infrastructure, uh, and again, this is one of those things that's 20 or 30 years down the line when we're no longer here that could be very advantageous to You'll be here. the city. No, I won't be here. <laughs> no, I'll be 80 years old. Be like Mr. Land at that point. But, uh, you know, if it's just the consensus of council, I don't think they have to spend any real money on it. Do you, Bobby, to update it? Report of the actual infrastructure in the system. Could you Condition. find out what that would be, maybe, and bring it back? Absolutely, to us? yes, sir. Before you do it, sure. All righty, and uh, we are on a little bit of a timeline, so you know, as quickly as you can, just put it together and shoot it out to us. Can do. All righty, great. Is that okay with everybody that just looks at it? Yeah. Good. Good. All righty. And with all that being said, staff, anything else? All righty. Meeting adjourned. Come back. Oh, man, Larry just left. Huh? So Larry just left. I want to see Larry.